Hello, welcome to the Sternix Corner. My name is Terry, and today we're going to be building an automatic watering system for a cage setup that we built in a previous video. Uh, this is a gravity fed system that feeds your PVC down to your standard poultry watering cups. Uh, some of the parts you're going to need will be uh, a five gallon bucket and a lid, your watering cups. For these style watering cups, I also buy a, uh, a T, which is half inch on both ends, and then it's got a, I believe it's a quarter inch threaded outlet for the cups to screw into. Uh, some of the other PVC parts that you'll need will be end caps, half inch T's, a half inch uh, ball valve, and that's to uh, drain and clean out your system. And I also use a uh, half inch compression coupling. And this is really nice for uh, being able to take the system apart, flush it out, and uh, assemble it back together without having to cut any PVC and, and rebuild it. Um, also, you'll need a uh, half inch nail threaded coupling and a half inch male um, bushing. Uh, to seal the bushing in the uh, bucket, I use these washers, which are made for your standard garden hose. Uh, these are also available at Home Depot. I think I paid like a buck and a half for a whole stack of them. Um, some zip ties a tube of 100% uh, waterproof silicone, preferably fast drying. You'll need some uh, PVC cement, and if you have them, some PVC cutters, or hacksaw will work just fine. Uh, Teflon tape. Teflon tape works great for putting on the threads of the cups, just to make sure you're not going to get any leaks there. Um, and a hole saw if you have it, uh, for drilling out the bucket. If not, you can always uh, trace around the bushing and cut it out with a knife. Either way works just fine. Okay, let's start out by uh, drilling a hole in the side of the bucket, which will accept our bushing. Uh, the reason I do this first is because I have to uh, put a little silicone around it just to guarantee that it's not going to leak, and that'll give it time for the silicone to dry. Uh, what you want to do is measure up from the uh, bottom of the bucket, two inches and center your hole on that. Uh, the reason for doing that is if you get any uh, particles or feathers or dust or anything in your bucket, it's not going to drain down into the system and clog your cups. So uh, we're going to start out. I'm using a three quarter inch hole saw. Uh, like I say, you can trace it and cut it out with a knife if you don't have a hole saw. But uh, we'll go ahead and get our hole cut. Okay. okay, now that you've got the hole cut, we'll go ahead and install the bushings. And what you want to do first is put one of these rubber gaskets, rubber hose gaskets, over top of your threads on the bushing that will be on the outside and then another one which will go on the inside. Now let's see if I can get this right so you can see it here. Here's your bushing and your uh, uh, o-ring. That'll go on the outside just like that. And then this piece will thread over top of this but from the inside of the bucket and it will also have an o-ring on it. So you're going to stick this piece through here, run your o-ring up over the threads on the inside, and then start your threads, and then start uh, threading it on. Okay, now that we've got that done, we'll go ahead and run a bead of uh, silicone around the outside and around the inside of it. Let me just make sure the o-ring's good and tight here. 
Do the same on the inside. I don't know if I can get it where you can see what I'm doing here or not. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you that because I won't be able to see what I'm doing. But basically, just run a, a bead around the inside just like you did on the outside. Okay, so now that we've got the bushing installed in our five gallon bucket and uh, silicone in so it won't leak. We'll go ahead and set this aside and give that silicone some time to dry. That will uh, allow us some time to go ahead and assemble the uh, rail systems for the cups and the main feed line. For each rail system, and we're doing three stack cages, so I need three rails, you need one T-fitting, and depending on the number of cups that you can put on each rail, and I use three, you'll need one uh, each of the uh, the fittings that's half inch on both ends and then uh, the quarter inch threaded that accepts the uh, watering cross. And your PVC pipe, obviously. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. You will need a 10 foot stick of uh, half inch PVC pipe. Okay, uh, first thing we want to do is cut our pieces of PVC that, so we can glue the entire rail together. Um, I know from doing this in the past in my other cages that I need about two and a half to three inch pieces depending on the spacing of the cuts. I like to keep them a minimum of two and a half inches apart. Uh, if I have the room, I'll go three. It just allows the birds a little more space. Okay, I've got all the uh, three inch uh, PVC pieces cut. Uh, now we can go ahead and start assembling our uh, water cup rails. Uh, I like to start at the feed line side, which requires a standard T. And uh, this side of the T is the vertical feed line. And this outlet here will run to your uh, water cup rails. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from your T piece of the three inch PVC that we just cut, then you're going to put a T for the watering cup rails. That's the one with the uh, threaded outlet on it, and that needs to run perpendicular to this T. And you want to make sure that it's good and square, because if it's not, your, your cups may be tilted up or tilted down. So you want to keep these pretty well square. There are, I don't know if you can see them, on these PVC pipe there are little notches that are basically placed at 45 degrees all the way around the PVC pipe. That can kind of help you align your, uh, your pieces. So basically, it's your T, your pipe, your T, and just continue on until you have all your watering cup uh, T's installed. At the end, you're gonna put your last piece of uh, PVC and then put a cap on the end. Uh, the reason I put a cap on the end is one, not only so the water doesn't leak out, but if I ever need to clean this out, I can just cut this cap off, clean out the rail, and then glue a new cap back on. Okay, so now that you've seen how the assembly goes together, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these apart, and using uh, PVC cement, I'll glue the, the entire assembly together. I have seen people dry fit these together. I've tried it, they leak, so... I glue up all my assemblies. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, do that, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll start working on the vertical uh, feed system, feed lines.
Okay, so I got all the rails glued up. Now we can go ahead and install them on the cages. Um, what we'll do is we'll get all the rails installed first, and then we'll come back and we'll cut our uh, feed lines to fit. Um, what I like to do is mount these four inches above the floor. That way my juveniles and my adults can reach the cups no problem. And uh, if I do have to put chicks in these cages, I'll just put a, a piece of two by four down and they can use that as a step to get up and be able to reach the cups. Um, a lot of my chicks, I'll start them out on the, uh, the regular quart size uh, waters. This, this style water and then uh, even though they're in a cage with the watering cups, I'll, I'll start them on this and I'll have water available in these and they'll, they'll kind of learn over time that, okay, these supply water. And then when I notice that they're drinking out of these, I'll remove the uh, quart size cups. So, okay, let's get back to installing these. Uh, like I say, you want to be uh, the center of this pipe four inches above the floor of the cage. Um, because I used because I used half inch um, hardware cloth on this and not the uh, the one by two that I normally use on my cages, I do have to uh, cut a little square out for the uh, nipple to fit through there. So let me go ahead and mark those. Um, I'll use a uh, sharpie and I'll just hold this up where I want. Now my made feed line runs parallel with this leg here. So I'll keep that right about there. And then I will mark my, that's pretty close there. I'll do it like that. Okay, you probably can't see that, but they're all cut out. And uh, now these can fit perfectly through the holes and our main feed line is lined up with our legs. So what I'll do is I'll grab a uh, zip tie and just temporarily zip tie this in place That way everything's held in place. So when I go to measure for my uh, feed lines, uh, it should be right on. Let me go ahead and get the, the other two uh, rails mounted and then we'll come back and uh, install the uh, main feed line. Okay, so I got all the uh, rail assemblies attached to the cages. Now we can go ahead and start assembling our feed line. Uh, what I did on the bucket uh, was cut a four inch piece of PVC and stuck it into this uh, fitting on the bucket, the bushing, and then put a 90 on this side. That'll be our uh, horizontal feed line to our, our main feed line. Uh, that four inch piece can be any length you want, depending on how far you want the bucket to sit back on top of the cage. I kind of like it a little bit closer so I can reach it in the water. So the next piece to go in is our disconnect, um, our compression fitting. And basically what that will do is we'll cut a short piece to fit here and a short piece to go here. And that way we can take the entire assembly apart, uh, the bucket can come apart separately, and the washed out, bleached, whatever you need to do with it. Okay, so I got the PVC cut and installed into the compression fitting. And uh, it, it's pretty simple. Basically you just spin the cap off the uh, compression fitting and inside you'll find a rubber line. Just slide that up over your PVC pipe, stick it back into the compression chain, put the cap on, and lock it down tight. Now I cut these pieces a little long intentionally, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll hold it up there and get me a mark and uh, cut it. So right there I've got to cut on the C. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Okay, now she should fit. And then we've got the compression fittings in line. Now all we've got to do is cut a piece from here to here. These are just solid straight pieces. 
Now from there to there, there to there, and then the bottom one will be a short piece, and we'll show you that. Let me go ahead and cut these, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so we've got all the uh, vertical pieces done, with the exception of the last one. And uh, the last one is just a short little piece that will uh, receive the uh, ball valve. And the ball valve is installed, so at any time you need to drain the system, flush it out, you can uh, open the valve and drain it out into another five gallon bucket and uh, close it off. So basically all we're gonna do is just install this down into the, uh, the last uh, T fitting and we'll be done with the feed line. We can install the cups and the wiring system will be complete. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue all this up off camera and then we'll come back and uh, show you how to uh, install the cups. Okay, so we've got all the PVC on the feed line all glued up and the uh, ball valve installed. Uh, the last thing to do is install the watering cups. Uh, before you install them though, you want to put some uh, PVC, I'm sorry, some uh, Teflon tape on the threads of the end that screws into your uh, T-fitting. Um, this will help to prevent any leaks. Uh, basically what you want to do is just stick it in there and carefully thread it. You don't want to cross thread them. And then just screw it in. You don't want to make it super tight. You just want it to where that there's a, a clear little washer on there. Uh, when that washer makes contact with the uh, the T then just give it one more turn if you don't want to smash that washer out of there it's definitely gonna leak so let me go ahead and put this last one in this one okay I wanted to show you one last thing before we wrap this one up on uh, these uh, watering cups um, you can't take them apart to uh, clean them or service them or replace the parts uh, basically you just grab this black piece and the cup and turn it counterclockwise and it'll slide right out. Um, this little dongle valve shutoff piece slides out also. So you can flush out this piece, you can flush this out. You can replace them gaskets if need be. You can push it back together, slide it back in there, lock it and reinstall it back into your watering system and you're good to go. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for the automatic watering system video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of this information useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Um, and if you would, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you'll get notifications of any upcoming videos, and it also helps me out. So I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one.